It's a great thickener. When you compare this recipe to other meatloafs, it's like... They're really good. So the key ingredient in this recipe is this. A starchy tuber similar to a yam, taro, and potato. So before even starting, I would just be like, go on Amazon. Preferably grass-fed. If it's eating a bunch of corn, you're gonna get everything that is in the corn. Okay, so we're gonna do two stalks of celery. We're gonna make like a base vegetable, uh, almost like a stuffing. One carrot. Why do I not peel these carrots? Because the bacteria on these carrots is like the bacteria from the soil that we need to eat more of. It's very beneficial. And organic carrots, they don't have all the pesticides on them either, so you don't have to necessarily worry about that. with the beginning of pretty much every recipe that has ever existed. All right, while that's going, uh, we're gonna begin the most labor-intensive process of this entire recipe, which is grating this entire sweet potato, um, which is why I didn't work out today. Left. Can't get lopsided. I should have done my left the entire time. Honestly. <sighs> Getting anaerobic. Look at that. You've never seen a sweet potato like that, have you? So, some of you might be a little concerned at this point because this sweet potato's a juicy guy and you're afraid that that might get into, that might just pool on the bottom of the meatloaf. That's where this guy comes in and saves the day. Our handy friend cassava flour, probably one of the most absorptive substances next to baby powder. Got a little crisp. This is where you want it though. They've softened up enough. I'm also not patient, so we're gonna continue on with the next step. So you've probably seen this before in many recipes, but have you seen this before? No? That's the first time you've seen that. So hit that like button, because I've just rocked your world. Have you ever seen grated sweet potato in a... in a pan? Adding a little bit more. Also, shout out to your mom for that new spoon. Shout out to my mom. <laughs> yeah, you look, you see that? William so Sonoma. From, look, woo. I'm sponsored actually. I just got my sponsorship. Yeah, mom, thanks for the spoon. I know you're, you're gonna be one of five people that watch this video. Okay, once it looks like this, you see that? Melted cheese. 
and it starts to smell like it's burning. That's when we're gonna take it off a little bit and we're gonna throw in our friend, Baby Kale. Our, you could use frozen spinach. That's what I used last time. Wow, I'm not doing That's probably enough. And why is this going last? Because it does. That is so seasonal right there. That's exactly what you want to be setting on your table in this cold fall evening. When you see those leaves falling off the trees. It's so symbolic. I only eat orange things in the fall. And the goal is here to just cool this down. So we're gonna put this guy back in our, that's where we started. And now we just wait for this to cool off. So this is what we're looking at. It's pretty cool now. So it was a, you have to cool it down. Why? Because you don't wanna cook this and this guy too early. So we're gonna put these guys in now. Fancy grass-fed beef. Entering the mix. See, if you would put this stuff in when the mix like, you know, piping hot, it would have just cooked the meat immediately and you would have ended up with like little meatballs, which is not what we're going for. Six tablespoons. Also, quick tip with cassava flour. <laughs> this stuff is literally like smoking out of the bag. It's is so like light it just floats out of <laughs> you just gotta be you can't really disturb it too much um, and if you do you you're gonna want to seal it pretty quickly because that stuff will just fly around your whole house as I said before we are absorbing all of that moisture and the moisture that already thick that does not look like meatloaf, but trust me, it will. We're gonna throw in the spices. Oregano, of course. Make it taste Italian. I don't even know that meatloaf is Italian. Thyme, one half tablespoon. I have some extra rosemary. I think rosemary really makes This is bad. Rosemary really makes anything taste more fancy. So we're just gonna throw in a few undamaged leaves. Mm. Makes you feel like you're in a spa. Wow, I'm just so much more relaxed. Rosemary's for like cooking. Lavender is for a spa. Oh. <laughs> Pro tip. This goes bad. Finishing touches. Not too much. Because I'm a med student. And your sister brings home gloves. <laughs> and my sister brings home gloves from work. We're just gonna do this little operation on <laughs> meatloaf. Super smooth. If anyone asks you what you do in med school. Plop this puppy in. Look at that. It's a nice fall loaf. It's a nice autumn loaf right there. Do you really want a normal brown meat loaf or do you want one that represents the beautiful season of autumn? See you in an hour. Goodbye. OK. 
thing is about one hour later, cutting is done. So good. Hey, Dee, come look at this. It really is just the consistency of a regular meatloaf. But it looks way more appetizing, I think. We're gonna try a little piece. It doesn't fall apart. It's not wet. It's not too dry. It's just like regular meatloaf. That's a little sweeter. The rosemary really helps it. I'm telling you, this is really good. And there's no breadcrumbs, there's no flour. And it's just holding together so well. recipe is from uh, this blogger called Creative in My Kitchen. Um, I don't have like every single ingredient that they use, so this is sort of like my ratchet version of their um, kind of bougie recipe.